Hello, it's Rachel from Good Behavior Beginnings. And in today's video, I'm going to provide our homeschool classroom tour and go over our daily schedule as well as a little bit of the organization. So thanks for watching. I want to start with our daily schedule. This is what we think our daily schedule is going to be. We're going to give it a try for a little while and see if we need to arrange it. So what I did was I printed out all of the things that we wanted to do. So I've got those listed there. And then I'm going to slide this into our wall organizer. And this top section here is clear and can be used as a dry erase uh, board because it's that clear plastic. So we're gonna slide that in there and that way we can mark off what we do so that we get things done um, and we know what we have left. Um, I find that that's helpful for me to have um, a, a schedule, a list, not necessarily times. I don't think that we're gonna stick to specific times, but to have an idea as to what we need to get done in the day and then I know that for my child, being able to mark stuff off is very satisfying. So we're gonna go with that to kind of motivate moving through the day. Um, organization, what I've done is uh, put all of these things on a list and then put them into a little binder where we can mark off what we've done each day. So I've got a couple of weeks here and we'll be able to mark it off when we complete it, but we'll also be able to see if there are things that we aren't getting to. So I can look at the week and I can see what's been missed maybe earlier in the week so we can make sure that we get it later in the week. Or if we see that something is just getting skipped or getting missed, we can try and figure out a different way to present it or a different timing so that we can make sure that we're covering everything that we want to cover. The other thing that I have in this little binder is, I'll hold it up here, is our lesson planning. So I, um, I like to have things planned and organized, but I also realize that given the situation and, um, and I'm not the only teacher, uh, my husband is also teaching, then we need to be able to leave things somewhat flexible. So my plan with this is to have like a goal, um, a, a section of the curriculum or, or reading something. Um, so for example, science, uh, one day science might be cooking or it might be a science experiment box uh, that, we, that we do an activity from. Um, the math uh, looks like we'll be able to do like one lesson a day. They don't look like they're gonna take very long, at least not at the beginning. So do a lesson, do the practice problems and um, that shouldn't take too long. Uh, PE health, <laughs> we uh, have realized that we did not get out nearly as much as my child was used to getting out once we had to go into lockdown. So we um, were making it a goal to get out, to be active. And if we're staying in, to still be active. Uh, at school, they have uh, two, sometimes three recesses if you count during the day and PE and then after school care. So there was a lot of outdoor exercise happening and we definitely did not keep up with that over the last six months that we've been at home. So making it a focus to make sure that we're exercising every day, it's good for us. We can um, model it and and it's good for kids to get that exercise. Um, music is generally just going to be a little bit of practice. We also found that uh, when when they practice every day, uh, it goes the lesson days go a lot smoother than if they only practice like the day before the lesson. So we're going to try and be more consistent with you know ten minutes. Um, every day that's spent uh, practicing the piano. 
uh, Spanish. Uh, we're still playing around with what it looks like through uh, Rosetta Stone. And we are going to see about uh, maybe doing a lesson, a full lesson a week. They break it down into different sections. And so that looks like it might work out pretty well. Language arts is the one we're going to play around with a little bit. Um, it kind of looks like we can cover sort of one lesson per week uh, with reading at the beginning of the week and then a couple of worksheets or a couple of different activities on the subject the rest of the week. When I get more of the curriculum that I'm still waiting on, um, then we might shift that around a little bit. We might spread topics out a little bit longer based upon our days. Um, our schedule is uh, four mornings a week is what we're planning because that's kind of the amount of time that we can spend uh, doing homeschool given our work schedules. So we are planning to start at eight o'clock and end at lunch. And that's when I will clock in for my job. Um, and, um, and then one or two days of the week, uh, my husband will be doing those uh, homeschool hours instead of me. So as far as organization goes, I've got one binder here that is really cutesy and I have no idea how I ended up with it. I went digging through our garage and found like old binders and this one is like super cute and kind of teachery. So um, it's got uh, the checklist of what we've accomplished each day. It's got our lesson plan. And then it's got notes for like other ideas or things that we're going to incorporate in the future. Um, the Blossom and Root curriculum was a digital download and that's what we're using for language arts and also to do some of their science stuff. So I'm, I didn't print the whole thing yet. I'm kind of printing as we go, just in case we kind of want to skip around or we end up not using it as much as I thought we would. Um, so I just got another, you know, binder. I think this one said fire drill before, but now, now it says parent guide on it. So, um, and then printed out what week one looks like. And then we can kind of mark off when we have it prepped, when we've completed it. Um, it describes what we're supposed to do. I've got another tab for the science side of things. Um, and it goes by wonders. It doesn't go by weeks. So you can jump around. You can um, it, spend as much time on a particular wonder as you want. So that's cool. So we just started with wonder number one. Um, and then I also have in here the science projects and um, activities and then the art um, projects for the first section. So that's for us as parents to be able to read and see what we're supposed to do to have something we can mark on. Um, it is digital, so we could pull it up um, online and on, I'm not online, pull it up on the computer. And it actually does have um, several links that are to like YouTube videos or other resources that are applicable to the lesson, especially in the science section. So I do have it on the computer and that way we can click on those links easily. But I also find that it's nice to have something on paper <laughs> to be able to like hold and compare with then the student book. So another binder and um, printed out again, sort of just doing it in sections right now, um, but printed out the uh, lesson, uh, the student activities for week one, um, printed out the student notebook with regards to science, which is just, um, uh, just a, a prompt and then they can draw and write about and the prompts are in the parent guide. Um, and then the student notebook, which um, is another place for the science uh, weekly 
information. So we have those two binders um, that we are sort of putting together for the Blossom and Root curriculum um, because I, I could print them and bind them and make it all fancy and I don't know, maybe I'll want to have done that, wished I had done that in the future. But right now, while we're still trying it out, like I'm fine just printing a little bit at a time, plus uh, plus my printer is like uh, kind of low on <laughs> ink, toner, whatever it is, and I'll have to order more. So instead of getting like halfway through a, a giant book of something to then not have something else printed, I'd rather do it week by week so that we at least have everything for one week. Um, okay, so organization. Um, I'm going to show you in a second. We basically have, this is very minimalist. We'll say it's a minimalist homeschool classroom. We have a folding table <laughs> that we're working on. Um, and under it, I have rolly carts with three drawers, and I'll show you those. Um, and then over here on the wall, I have one of these wall Organize or organizers that I never really use. Like I like organized organizing things, but I don't necessarily use them. But I like them because it looks nice and orderly. So I think we're gonna try and use this. Um, so uh, like I said, our list with our schedule is gonna go in the top section there, I'm pointing at it. And then um, this small note card has ideas for indoor uh, PE recess activities. Um, this uh, larger uh, note right now is just a, a note wishing our kid um, a great first day of school. And all of those things, um, they're clear plastic, so they could be dry erase on them. We have dry erase markers. Um, and then there are four folders, which I think I'm going to use for the actual like product measures of, or, or the products or the work samples that we have to turn in. Um, they accept uh, electronic submission and, and it could be like a video clip or pictures or things like that. Um, but I think that there will be some work samples that we'll just want to keep so we can have one for each of our graded subjects, um, which for us is language arts, math, Spanish, and music. And that way we'll have those when we need to turn in samples. So I'm gonna move the camera around a little bit and show you what it looks like from another perspective. All right, so the lighting's not as great, but um, this is <laughs> where I was sitting before. So this is our homeschool classroom. Um, this used to be a toy room uh, when uh, our kid was younger, and now it's more of a TV room. So the TV is still in here, so we needed something that we could put away pretty easily and it not interfere with the couch and the TV. Um, so we just have a folding table um, and a little chair, and then we have these carts. Um, these are the ones that are on wheels with three drawers. Um, they're just the ones that, you know, you pick up at like any, uh, any store, I guess, now that has housewares. Um, we also have a small uh, drawer for um, pencils, erasers, scissors, that sort of thing. And the laptop sits up here. Um, it's an old laptop that has to stay plugged in. <laughs> so it, we can't really go too far with it, but we can angle it a different way and sit on the couch if we want to do it that way. Um, these drawers, when we work, we actually slide them out. So I am going to show you that and uh, show you what's in uh, how we organize the drawers first, and then I'll show you kind of what it looks like when we're working. So this uh, top drawer, there we go, we're pointing. Um, this top drawer has the uh, lesson plan and the binder that I was showing you with the checklists of what we're doing. Um, and it also has the parent guide to the Blossom and Root binder. The next drawer down has the Blossom and Root student workbook binder. Um, and then the bottom drawer has things from our morning work, which I'll do a separate video on what we're doing for 
morning work. In the other drawer, the top one has flashcards that we're using, again, for morning work. Uh, this drawer is um, manipulatives. Uh, like I said before, my kid likes to fidget and needs to be moving a lot. So we want, I wanted to make sure that we had some things handy that uh, they can use when I'm reading or when we're listening to something. So, or if we just need a little movement fidgety breaks, we can take that. Um, and then the bottom drawer has what we're calling handiwork. On the schedule, uh, we have our morning work, which consists of flashcards and a few little activities. We have our core subjects, um, Spanish, math, language arts, and uh, music. We have PE slash health on there, so we can make sure that we make time for that. Um, and then I also have handiwork and culture. So handiwork is going to be things that require fine motor skills to create a specific finished product. Um, and I can do a, a video on what we're going to do with handiwork maybe after we get a chance to try it out and see how it goes. Um, but that has all of the handiwork in it. And then this binder here, that is where we're putting our culture information, at least some of it. Um, and we have ordered some other things and some books and some activities. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of flesh that out as we give it a try and figure it out. Um, you know, we're, we're figuring it out as it stands right now. So I'm gonna sit in the chair and I'm gonna show you how I organize everything when we are going to work. So I pull this one out and this one just stays here right to the side. So kid sits here, um, the, you can't see past me. The um, fidgets are right here so they can reach them. I pull out this binder and I pull this cart out and I generally set them here. Now you can't see me. And then I sit on the couch and kid sits in the chair and we've got the computer up here and I can get materials out. They can get materials out. They can get materials out over there. And when the date is done, when our school day finishes, we can just roll everything back in pretty quickly. And that's it. So that's our homeschool <laughs> classroom tour. It's not much, very minimalist, um, but you know, we're working with what we had. Um, we, I have not gone out and bought new materials, but I also was, uh, due to the nature of my work, have a lot of um, office supply uh, materials that I had been saving and collecting in, in our garage. So we had a lot of stuff to work with. I'm sure at some point there will be things that we'll need to go out and purchase. Um, but for right now, that's what we've got. So thanks for watching and let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd like more information about. And I will provide some more information about some of these different activities that we're doing. If there's a, a lesson from this, I think work with what you've got and it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I am not super cutesy craftsy. So, you know, there's nothing much to it. It's, <laughs> it's drawers and binders and um, pencils and papers, and that's what we're doing. So thanks again. Um, check in for another video in the future.